The standard hydrogen electrode is used to determine the standard electrode potential of a half cell. By definition, standard electrode potential is the voltage measured, or EMF we can say as well, when a half cell is connected to the standard hydrogen electrode. The standard hydrogen electrode is occasionally also called the standard hydrogen half cell. They're exactly the same thing. And for the most up-to-date version of any definitions mentioned in this video tutorial, please check out the video description, where you'll also find other links to further content from A-Level Chemistry. Let's take a look at what the standard hydrogen electrode is made of. Our apparatus needs to represent both sides of this equilibrium. To represent the H plus ions, we're going to use a one mole per decimeter cubed solution of hydrochloric acid. The hydrogen gas we're going to use must be at 100 kilopascals of pressure and 298 Kelvin to maintain standard conditions. Since there is no solid metal in the half equation, we must use a platinum electrode. Platinum is used because we need it to transfer electrons, and also it's selected because it's unreactive, we can say inert, so we don't need to worry about any alternative reactions taking place. As mentioned before, the standard hydrogen half cell is the reference standard to which all other half cells are compared to. We have to do this because we are unable to measure the standard electrode potential of a half cell all by itself. So by defining the standard electrode potential of the hydrogen half cell as 0.00 volts, we can then compare the tendency of all other half cells to donate or accept electrons to the tendency of the standard hydrogen electrode, and then report this as a positive or negative voltage value. Let's look at some setups to explain this. For consistency, and to allow us to assemble an electrochemical series, the standard hydrogen electrode should always be placed on the left-hand side. This way, the sign and value of the reading on the voltmeter can be allocated as the standard electrode potential of the other half cell. This is the apparatus necessary to record the standard electrode potential of the copper half cell. Here you can see we have the standard hydrogen electrode on the left and the copper half cell on the right. The copper half cell represents both sides of its half equation equilibrium by having a copper solid metal electrode placed in a solution of copper two ions. The voltmeter, as you can see, reports a value of positive 0.34 volts, and this is then assigned as the standard electrode potential of the copper half cell redox system. Now with some further labels, we can actually see that this copper half cell is the cathode, the positive electrode, and the hydrogen half cell is the anode, the negative electrode. These roles can be allocated using the standard electrode potential values once we know them. Since we now know the half cell for the copper has a more positive standard electrode potential, we can understand that it has a greater tendency to accept electrons than that of the hydrogen half cell in this particular pairing. We could also say that the copper redox system position of equilibrium is further to the right than the hydrogens. Looking at the very top labels, the direction of flow of electrons is from anode to cathode, aka negative electrode to positive electrode, and the salt bridge that we've got labelled up in the middle completes the circuit by transferring ions, not electrons. That's a common mistake. Next up, we have this apparatus for measuring the zinc redox system's standard electrode potential. So here are the half equations we need this time. Once again, we have a solid zinc electrode in a solution of zinc two ions as represented in the half equation in a very similar way to the copper half cell in the previous example. The standard hydrogen electrode is on the left and this time our voltmeter reading is a negative 0.76 volts. This value and its sign is allocated as the standard electrode potential of the zinc redox system. The zinc half cell here with this final set of labels is actually clearly labeled as the anode this time. So that's different from the previous example. As we see a different direction of flow of electrons, the negative value on the zinc standard electrode potential informs us that the zinc position of equilibrium is actually further to the left than the redox system of the hydrogen, and that the zinc has a greater tendency therefore to donate electrons. If I wanted to create a functioning cell with a positive cell potential here, I would actually need to move the standard hydrogen electrode over to the right hand side. But for recording these standard electrode potential values, we keep it on the left for consistency. 
So how do we draw one of these in the exam? Well, the video that you can see linked on screen now will take you right the way through that, not using the standard hydrogen electrode, but instead moving on to looking at two different half cells, giving you that cell potential and the direction of flow of electrons, which is such a common exam question. If you'd also like to delve deeper into the electrochemical series, there's a video linked on screen for that as well.